What's up guys, Brad here. In this video, I'll walk you through how to install and set up Room EQ Wizard along with ASIO for All, how to find and download your UMIC calibration files, and we'll also get things configured so you can start taking measurements of your speakers and subs. Now, before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Also, I'll leave links to products mentioned in this video down in the description, along with some other links to things like my full home theater setup. So to get started, let's go over what things you'll need in order to follow along with this video. Now, some type of PC or laptop will obviously be needed here, along with an HDMI cable to hook up your computer to your receiver. If your computer doesn't have an HDMI output, then you can use a three and a half millimeter to stereo RCA cable to hook up the audio output of your computer to your receiver, but just know you'll be limited to stereo audio only. And then finally, you'll need a measurement microphone like the UMic one I'm using in this video. And I'd highly recommend also picking up a cheap $20 microphone boom stand off of Amazon. It will just make placing the mic much, much easier. Now, once you've got all those things and you're good to go, hooking it up is all pretty straightforward. As you can see, I've got the HDMI output from my computer hooked into a free HDMI input on my receiver. So you're good there. Just make sure your receiver is set to the proper input. So now we want to set up the UMic one or whatever measurement mic you're using at the position that you're normally sitting at when you're playing a game or watching a movie. So I'm here on my couch and you'll notice I'm not exactly centered in the frame here. This is about where I normally am when I'm playing a game or watching a movie. And that's because we want the UMic one in that spot. We want it here where my head is at ear height and point it straight up. What I normally do is, first things first, I put the UMic one on the stand. This is just a, a standard boom stand from Amazon. I think it's the Amazon Basics brand, actually. It's about 20 bucks. And I have the UMic one on there. I have the USB connector already plugged up. And the reason I do that is you'll notice if you have the UMic one, the connector for the USB cable is on the bottom, which means that if you don't connect it first, once you've got the mic into the position that you want it, now you have to connect it and you either have to do this or you know lift it up. It's not too much of a big deal, not a requirement, but I normally don't like to handle the microphone after I've got it into the position that I want. So then after that, I can start moving it back to where my head is. And I normally sit kind of right next to it to gauge exactly how far back I need. So I'll go ahead and loosen the mic stand here and we'll kind of move it back to around that distance there. And that's pretty good. It doesn't need to be perfect or exact, but it needs to be close. It doesn't need to be way up here. It needs to be back here around the area where your ears are. So after that, we need to raise it up to about ear height. And what I normally do is I put my arm around it like I'm going on a date. What I normally do, and it seems kind of weird, but I just put my finger on top of the mic kind of move my head over a little bit. And then I'm like, okay, uh, this is about where my ear is. I might want to go a little higher. So I'll raise it up a little bit, not too much. And then I'll do the same thing. Just try to make sure that it's around that area. And that's perfectly fine. So again, it doesn't need to be perfect. So after that point, your mic might be kind of facing like this or you know, kind of over there. And you would want to make sure that's just straight as possible. And you might need to look at it from a few different angles to get that. But then once that's done, plug it into the computer and you're pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and hop over to the computer and we'll get REW installed and all that other fun stuff. All right, so now let's go ahead and download all the software we need. Windows should have automatically recognized your measurement microphone and installed the drivers, so we're good to go there. First off, let's head to roomeqwizard.com and we'll scroll down here and we'll just go ahead and download this top one here, the Windows installer with JRE. So we'll just click on that and it should download automatically there. Now next, we'll go ahead and head over to asioforall.org. We'll go ahead and scroll down here. I typically avoid the betas for this kind of stuff, and I just go with the official release, which is right down here. It's ASIO for All 2.14. So we'll click on that. And then now to get our UMic calibration file. So if you're using a different microphone, this might be different for you. We want to go to minidsp.com. We're gonna roll over products and we're gonna scroll down to UMic 1 or UMic 2 if that's what you have. We'll click on that there. And then on this page, we'll scroll down and you'll see this unique calibration file download section here. And right here is where you type in your serial numbers. Now I'm gonna do that real quick and you can find the serial number on your box 
or on the U-Mic itself. So I'll just plug that number in here. So we'll click submit here and it's gonna download both the regular and 90 degree file. If you see a little pop-up up here saying minidsp.com would like to download multiple files, go ahead and click okay and it will download that for you. If it doesn't pop up, you can download each file individually right here. So just click these to download and we're good to go. So I'm gonna go over to my downloads folder now and you'll see we have everything we need here. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm in here, just gonna create a folder and label it umic cal files. And I'm just gonna drag these in here just to keep everything organized. And then I'm gonna move this. So I'm gonna cut this here and I'm just gonna move it to the desktop. That way for this video, I know right where it is, but you can move it anywhere you want. So going back to our downloads here, we'll go ahead and double click on the REW installer and let that do its thing. It should basically do everything for us automatically. So just follow here, click next. You can read this EULA here if you want to. You know, who reads those? And we'll select a file path to install it there. Default is fine. And we can choose to create a start menu folder if you want to, this is all up to you. And then just make sure these two are selected as well. Hit next and you can create a desktop icon Icon if you want. All right, so we clicked up finish there. You'll notice a little desktop icon. Now we'll just move on to ASIO for all. We'll double click that and let that go through and do its thing. And for these options here, you just wanna make sure the top is selected. The other two you don't really need to worry about for what we wanna do with it with REW. Click next and default install path is fine. There we go, we'll click on finish. And now we're ready to open up REW. Now immediately you should have mini DSP UMIC one detected. Use it for measurement. We'll click on yes. And it will ask us if we have a calibration file. Well, yes we do, we just downloaded it. For this, I'll go ahead and locate my desktop, go into UMIC files there, and we'll just select the 90 degree file, which is how we have it set up. We have it pointed straight up. The other file would be useful if you were measuring individual speakers and you had the microphone, you know, a few inches, six to 12 inches away from the speaker. But for this instance and how we have it set up here, 90 degree is what we want. So we'll click on open. We can go ahead and close all this stuff here. This is just letting you know what's been changed. There's some walkthroughs and stuff they have on there. So I'll go ahead and maximize this. And now we want to come up to preferences. We're going to set this stuff up before we set up ASIO for all. Under preferences, notice the first section here is under sound card. So under sound card, we have Java selected. That's fine. We'll change that in a moment. For the output device, we'll select the Denon AVR. Now I'm doing this under Java because you can use either or. Java is limited to stereo though. So if you were just measuring your subs, then Java would really be all you wanted unless you wanted to see how your subs are integrated with all your other speakers, say your center channel or your left surround or your right surround, or if you have speakers in the back. You wanna use ASIO for all in order to do that. But for just doing your subs and your front left and right, Java is fine. For the sample rate, we can leave this at 48 kilohertz. You'll notice our input device is listed as UMIC1. And for sweep level, we'll just leave this at minus 12. Moving on to the mic meter tab, and you notice we do have our calibration file loaded up for our UMIC. That's exactly what we want. And we'll just leave this at mic or Z weighted SPL meter. You don't need to worry about this right now. So we're good to go there. Now let's go ahead and set up ASIO for all. All right, so now to set up ASIO for all, we're gonna come back to the sound card tab here. We'll select ASIO under the driver section, and then we're gonna choose a device. So for this, it's ASIO for all V2. It's gonna ask us the following cal files currently being used. It's basically saying, do you wanna use the same UMIC calibration file that we're using for Java? Yes, we do. Click on yes. All right, so if you pop over to the mic meter section here real quick, then you'll notice that we still have that 90 degree file loaded, which is exactly what we want. So we'll come back over to the sound card tab and you'll notice if we go to select inputs, we don't see the U mic in here. And also this just says HD audio out. So what's going on? Well, basically if you're using a laptop, you might not run into this issue, but because I'm using a dedicated graphics card in my computer, it kind of requires a little more setup. But I think that's a good thing because some people might be using this on their media center PC or something like that. But we'll still go over how to set up the laptop stuff as well. So what I need to do is activate things in ASIO for all in order to show up here. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the ASIO control panel. You'll notice here that we have the Realtek audio selected and the NVIDIA, everything else is basically turned off. So 
this means that that's turned on, everything else is turned off. What I'm gonna go ahead and do as well is click on the little tool over here. That's just gonna give us a better, closer look at what's going on over here. We don't need to worry about this stuff, we just wanna worry about this stuff, but I like having the option to see what's going on over here. So what we need to do is basically turn off these here. You can turn those off individually or the whole thing. And we need to turn on the one for Nvidia. Now, if you're using a laptop, then you'll probably just be good with Realtek Audio if that's what's already on then this should work. You shouldn't need to change it at all. You wanna go in here and make sure that the input and output is selected here as well. We'll go ahead and make sure those are off though for this video because I'm using an Nvidia graphics card. The Nvidia graphics card is turned on. And then we also wanna turn on the U mic. And that's basically going to allow us to select it inside here. But wait a minute, it's not showing up. What we might need to do is go back to Java, go back to ASIO and choose the device again. Click on yes. And now you'll notice the U mic shows up as well as our high definition audio one, which means that all the audio is now being routed out of the NVIDIA graphics card and not the regular HDMI output on the computer. This really, again, only applies to if you're using a dedicated graphics card from NVIDIA or AMD, you need to come in here and select the proper thing in ASIO for all. So now that all that is set up, the final step before taking your first measurement is to set the overall level in your receiver. Easiest way to do that, and the way that I always do it, is I click on generator. Under the drop down here, make sure pink noise is selected. Our RMS level here is minus 12, and then we're set to speaker cow. We have high definition audio one selected. This is gonna be our left channel. This first one here is left, audio two is right, Audio three is center. Audio four is just the subs with nothing else playing. Audio five and six, I believe, are your back surround channels, so your left and right. And then seven and eight is your side left and side right surrounds. Then I'll go ahead and select the SPL meter. And then under these settings, make sure SPL selected, C weighting is selected, and S is selected for slow. So we'll click on the record button there. Then we'll just click on play under the generator here. And then I'll use the overall volume on the remote for my receiver. So this number here reads 75 dB. All right, that's good. We are good there. And now let's go ahead and take our first measurement. I exited out of those. I'm gonna click on measure. So starting frequency, we can set that to 10. That's just gonna be where the measurement frequency starts. For ending, I'll just set, select 20,000. We're just gonna measure the whole speaker here. And then for level, we'll leave it at minus 12. And length is 256, that's fine. That's just gonna tell you how long it is. So you notice if we go up to 512, it's now almost 11 seconds. For what we're doing for right now, 256K is fine. Output. HD audio one, that's exactly what we want. That's our front left channel. The input is set to UMic one. Basically after that, just click on start measuring. It will take a measurement. Now, if you're kind of in a spot where you need to move out of the way, you can actually set a delay here. So you wanna set a delay for five seconds, you can do that. So that way it gives you time to kind of move out of the way if you want. So I'll just leave it set to zero. I'll just click on start measuring. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck phase and mic meter cow just so we can see this measurement in order to see the full measurement, because right now, if you look, we're just limited to 15 to about 200 Hertz. Go ahead and click on 20 to 20,000. And this might look kind of funky because you got stuff going on up here. Basically, this is without any smoothing applied. So it's going to look like this. You don't wanna apply smoothing if you're just focusing on maybe your base. But if you're trying to measure and correct some stuff with your main speakers, then we need to turn on smoothing. Click on graph up top here and select one six. And that's gonna kind of smooth everything out and make it a little more readable. So there you have it. You should now be well on your way to measuring your speakers and subwoofers with REW. Now, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider giving it a like. Also, if you have any questions about what I covered in this video, or if you use REW and have some useful tips of your own, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.